What's up, everybody? I'm General Dort, and I'm going to do a review on the North Carolina class battleship, Tier 8 battleship in World of Warships. I'm sure that you guys have seen videos on this before, but you know, I'd like to go ahead and provide you my perspective and maybe enlighten you guys to some of the things that I've seen that others haven't. Try to enhance, uh, enhance everyone's understanding of how to use this amazing ship. My personal favorite in the game. Uh, this is a lead ship of her class, obviously, based on the name. She's the fourth warship in the U.S. Navy to be named after the state of North Carolina. Uh, she was the first newly constructed American battleship to enter service during World War II. Took part in literally every major offensive in the Pacific. She earned 15 battle stars. Most decorated battleship of World War II. She's a museum ship now in Wilmington, North Carolina, but in World of Warships, she gets after it every day. Sometimes to great effect and sometimes not so much. It all depends on your perspective and how you're able to bring this thing, uh, bring this thing to bear. I just want to talk through some of the, the features that it has and some of the things that I personally roll into battle with. And then we'll do some, some replays to show you what she's capable of. So in terms of survivability, she's pretty good. She's got uh, 82 compared to her sister ships throughout, well, brother and sister ships throughout the game. She's on par with just about everybody else. She falls short slightly uh, in terms of the uh, turpits in the Bismarck, mainly due to enhanced hit points. She has a little bit less than the turpits in the Bismarck, and she has a different kind of armor. The Germans enjoy that turtleback armor where it's very difficult to citadel them. North Carolina is citadelable. If she's not used properly based on, you know, see how flat the side is right there. It's not very good for trying to block rounds. Turpits in the Bismarck. So it appears that it's the same. It's rounded and it's got uh, an interior design that is more conducive to being able to block shells. However, her frontal armor is pro. She can block a lot of shots. Blocking this thing is... You go bow in with this thing, and you're going to annoy anybody that you face. Best option is going to be just to burn you down. I don't personally like that style of gameplay, but in competitive gameplay, like uh, any kind of league, 12v12s, plans are facing off against one another. We've seen it with Supremacy. We've had Fight Night. You get the Omni Cup and all that stuff. Go bow in. It's... Uh, quite annoying and most people either burn you down or they just uh, choose a different target to shoot at and then focus you last yeah she's a she's beautiful bow on and a lot of people play her that way but me personally I like to stay on the move you know I like to juke and jive this thing I'm pushing Q I'm pushing E a lot just to make sure that I'm uh, I'm not gonna get the enemy I'm not gonna receive a delicious enemy salvo right here on my broadside not what I'm about but I like to stay mobile but in situations yes I will go bow in yeah, she is uh, kind of shorter on the survivability side, technically by the numbers, but uh, if she's played correctly, she can defeat any of those German battleships with ease based on her uh, superior armament. So now we go down to artillery. We look at these big guns, right? She has nine 16 inch guns mounted on three turrets. One of them is super fine, which means it's over another, so it can fire right over the top of the other one. Uh, she's got the one well, of the biggest guns uh, for tier 8 other than the Amagi she also has 16 inch shells now if you look at some of the statistics here she has 30 second reload time 180 degree turn time is not that bad it's, uh, you can kind of get out there on the move especially with the sharpshooter captain skill and stay mobile and you can do those turns and still stay connected to whatever you're trying to shoot Turrets can still stay on point. Uh, maximum dispersion is technically the worst out of all the other tier 8 BB. We've got the Amagi here. Uh, this one with the modules that I have on it. I do have accuracy on it. Which is not offered on American battleships of the same tier. American battleships don't get the accuracy module until tier 9, the Iowa. But uh, with this, I've got uh, 211 meters of dispersion. Amagi. Now, if we were to take that off, put something else in place. Anything else? Still 227, so better than every other tier 8 in the game. Again, 293 for the uh, 
in North Carolina at face value looks pretty bad. 274 dispersion. Bismarck and 157 for the Turpets. Now, what isn't mentioned here is the horizontal dispersion buff that occurred a few patches ago for this. So anyone who knows how this thing was since closed beta, uh, you know, pretty much like a shotgun. It would be very difficult to hit things. A lot of people got frustrated and they put up the North Carolina in favor of the Amagi. There was a horizontal dispersion buff. I don't know the specifics of it, but now you definitely have a better chance at getting those Citadel hits, deleting broadside cruisers. He's, she's just become far more viable. So don't let the numbers fool you on that. She's also equipped with 10 secondary turrets. Uh, 127 millimeter you know, batteries on those as well. They're all right. Uh, they also have multi-function as anti-aircraft batteries as well. So they're kind of your long-range AA. But uh, if, you, if you spec them out, they can get out to like 7.2, 7.6 or something like that. Yeah, the range buff it received as well. But uh, I usually go with the anti-air because this thing is a troll against aircraft carriers. We'll explain more about that later. The max firing range is 23.3 kilometers for the 16-inch shells. Now, uh, there is a module to enhance that range, though I do not see why you would ever want to. 23.3 is just fine. Much better. You have much more module efficiency other kind of arrangements now this is the reason why i love the north carolina the anti-air defense it is rated at 100 okay which blows everyone else out of the water here eight wise so the imagi enjoys a 60 AA rating 62 for the bismarck 59 for the turpets now just for argument's sake and if we were add anti-air and captains on here it could get up to maybe like 80 maybe even 90 but uh, the north carolina just goes over the top and if you run this with the flags that provide you an additional 10 percent anti-air effectiveness i mean you're looking at you're trolling tier 10 cv let alone tier 8 you know, you're going to be very effective uh, at keeping those mosquitoes off your team's ass definitely don't want to up on but uh, you have maximum a range of 7.2 kilometers that's where these uh five inch gun turrets come into play and then it gets smaller with the 40 millimeter bofors and then the 20 millimeter and uh by the time they get into 20 millimeter range the planes are just vaporizing away there's really nothing more that they can do if cvs come after you they're either inexperienced or they just see that you're the last ship or one of the last ships left and they have to get rid of you they have no other choice so be very, it would behoove you to position yourself in such a way that you don't take HE damage too early. You don't want to lose those precious anti-air turrets, especially if there's a CV in the game. Uh, and really be a pain in their ass late game and troll them pretty well. Especially with a manual fire, though, which we'll go into later. Maneuverability, she's at a 38. Uh, 760 meter tur turning radius. It's not the best, but, uh, you know, see, 870 for the Amagi. 850 for the Turpets and the Bismarck. Maybe it is the best. How much I know about my ship? Nothing, apparently. Oh, she turns better than just anybody, anybody else. So, um, I was mistaken. But, that should tell you that in this ship, you are at a great advantage if you push QQQ, EEE, and whatever. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you, you just just continually move your ship and don't take stupid unnecessary damage. She's got the maneuverability for it. So her base rating is uh, what 38. The turning radius is good, but uh, the maximum speed is better on the Amagi uh, and the Turpets and the Bismarck. North Carolina only comes in at 27.5 knots, but as a result, I think she could turn a little bit better. And her rudder shift time is 13.8 seconds, so it's better than the Amagi's. Uh, but not better than the Bismarck and the uh, Turpets. Again, she can still move pretty well, in my opinion. And you definitely have to have the rudder shift module. It, it's a must on any battleship, in my opinion. You've got to be able to avoid torpedoes and uh, turn into 
torpedo bombers if they get that close to our in North Carolina. Concealment's 42. Um, 13.7. I've got it down to that with the modules. I don't use the concealment captain skill at all. She could be detected by air at 11.3. How does she stack up with her with her sisters and brothers? 15 kilometers. Sister here, the Amagi. Counterpart. Her brothers, because, you know, the Germans call their battleships males instead of females. Sitting at 14.3. Uh... So she does have the best there with uh, with the modules. And all my battleships are equipped with the uh, concealment module, so about as good as it gets. You can stay hidden pretty well. All right, let's go into modules real quick. Uh, you have the option of getting a B-Hull. You have the option of getting Mark 8 Mod 2 for enhanced firing range increase. And, you you know, you have a propulsion module that you need to, need to get as soon as possible as well. You don't want to be driving around in a stock North Carolina. And the North Carolina B hull does provide additional AA turrets, stuff like that. So it would behoove you to get that as you know, as fast as possible. I used to run on this auxiliary armaments modification to protect my AA mount survivability. Found that that was the wrong answer. Why? Because for some reason it felt like my turrets made of glass, and they would just every salvo, anything within 10 kilometers. AP from another BB, they would get knocked out uh, either temporarily or permanently. And there's nothing more frustrating than when you have both of these bad boys knocked out and your only option is to reverse into the enemy and use this as the front of your ship to engage. That has happened to me. So now I run with the main armament modification. Right? Gives me a plus 50% to battery survivability and a minus 20% chance of it becoming incapacitated. It has made all the difference in my gameplay. Again, these are your primary batteries. They should be protected the most because there is no guarantee of a CV joining your game. Uh, for my second spot, I do have the AA gun mod, uh, mod 2. I want that extra range. I want this to be a troll for aircraft carriers. I want it to be the bane of their existence. I want them to look at this ship and think, no thanks, I'm going after somebody else. Period. I don't need the extra range for the plotting room. Uh, I don't need the... Uh, Enhanced traverse speed and the secondaries are very situational. I don't need those as well. It's not worth the AA sacrifice. Even though sometimes if I'm not seeing a CV and I'm playing ranked, I will definitely run with the secondary mod. All right. Third, damage control, mod one. You got to take it. Anything you can get to the negative risk of flooding and fire on a battleship, it's a must. Shouldn't really be a thing. All right, steering gears modification for this. Negative 20 to rudder shift time. You pretty much need it because your rudder shift is slower than your counterparts. You have the 13.8. Uh, barely slower than the... Barely faster than the... Um, the Imagi, but definitely slower by a lot. Interprets in the Bismarck. Bear that in mind. And then I always take concealment. Whatever I can do to reduce my detectability, I will do. Within reason. Not using a captain skill forward or anything. That's nonsense. Go to the exterior. I run the premium camouflage on it. Because I, I want to. I think it looks pretty cool. And I don't mind the buffs. And the perks and stuff like that. But. Um, I think you should definitely run. Negative detectability. 3%. And negative 4% to the dispersion of the enemy. If you are not running camouflage on a battleship. You are doing yourself a disservice. I've run into people in the game that have simply uh, used the excuse of, well, I can't afford it. Listen, can't afford it. 22500 per game, all right? All you need to do is wreck a decent amount of faces when you get in there. There's plenty of flags and stuff to enhance your ability to receive credits. And if you're running premium, you should never have an issue with credits. Not even a little bit. Not by a long shot. So run camouflage. Don't be that guy or gal who runs into battle with nothing on, looking naked as the day you were born. Right? Help yourself out. Treat yourself. Don't cheat yourself. Signals. If I have them available, I like to run the plus 20 hit points. Always. Whenever I can. I want to get that 20% uh, amount of HP for the uh, repair party. Uh, I will run negative 20 to ref flood and recovery time if I've got it available. Definitely run the consumable flag, November Foxtrot. If I have dead flags in certain situations, I'll run that as well. Especially in a, a very highly competitive 
form of play like ranked battles or anything like you know um, uh, clan versus clan you definitely need to have negative 20 percent to the time of fire extinguishing there's if you got to get these flags whenever you can people they are precious for a battleship if I'm trying to troll an aircraft carrier and I know there's a lot of CVs in queue I will bump these November echo set of sevens on for the plus 10 percent uh, uh, damage per second to AA. Uh, 10% average damage to the mouse and stuff like that, and the rear, the rear gun, whatever. I just run that flag because it's it's especially trolly. Uh, um, and I like to run. Those are really the the big ones, you know. If I'm grinding out a captain, I'll use XP, but I don't have that issue anymore. Look, I have 2.6 million free XP on this thing. I'm not not hurting for any of that. Yeah, those are pretty much the basics that I like to roll with. As far as flags go, anything you can use to give you a buff, all right? I just use this because it gives me a buff. It's whatever. But you got some cool stuff on here, too, you can probably earn or be lucky enough to get. <clears throat> Let's talk about the captain now. Admiral Thomas Paul. I wonder where he's from. Basic name. Anyway, I've got this set up in a relatively interesting configuration that some BB captains might disagree on me with. But uh, I always want to run my basic firing training for the, for the tier one skill. Right. And uh, expert marksman, most definitely for uh, the turret traverse. You want to be able to use your turrets while you're in a turn to remain focused on whatever enemy you're you're looking at. All right, so you need to have that on a battleship, in my opinion. I'll just talk about the individual ones first, then I'll go to the extras I put on. Superintendent. I need that extra repair. Not so much the extra fighter, but I usually need the extra repair. I like to have it for the pub stomp configuration. I use AFT to increase the effectiveness of my uh, secondary armaments, AA armaments, and then I use manual fire control to get after it. Just wreck planes off the map. Now, I also run in this configuration fire prevention. Some people say it does something. Some people say it doesn't. Uh, I'd take whatever I can get when it comes to fire prevention because there is nothing more frustrating than getting lit ablaze every single individual HE shell that hits you. All right, Maybe it's a placebo effect and I take this and I feel better about myself, but uh, I have it nonetheless for this configuration. And I take uh, basics of survivability to reduce the time of repair, fire extinguishing, and the recovery from flooding. It's pretty good to have. This is just a useless skill that I have because I don't really know where else to put the point. Now, if I was running uh, ranked battles and I wasn't involved in pub stomping and CVs were not something I saw on a regular basis, I would run Jack of All Trades. Wouldn't have this. I would run this instead. High alert. I would go pretty much full repair and damage. Uh, whatever I can do to enhance the survivability of my ship without using these two skills. So I like to get these three and this uh, to reduce my repair cooldown to 58 seconds. So even if I burn, it ain't going to be for that long, you know? I'm trying to be smart about this stuff. And the last thing we'll talk about are the uh, ammunition and consumables. Run premium, guys. Do yourself and your team a favor. Spend the 22500 on the control party and the repair party. Get yourself a nice, juicy catapult fighter. You do not need a spotting aircraft in this. What are you going to hit in North Carolina from 27 kilometers away? You're going to hit the ocean. That's what you're going to hit. Not very, uh, not very good to uh, to roll with. Okay, but yeah, she's a she's a beautiful ship. She's outfitted very efficiently. I think that anyone that knows how to run her will be able to. To, to use her to great effect, and you'll start just doing over 100k game after game after game. It's too easy. Now, what I'm going to show you guys is some gameplay. There's no CV in the match that I'm about to show you. It's uh, myself, Sir Venomic, and MF Jones 83. We uh, we carried quite hard in a division with two North Carolinas and a Kutuzov. This just goes to show you some of the maneuvering techniques that we go through and uh, how we work as a team to focus targets and angle the armor so without further ado let's get to it all right as we can see here 
got the uh, replay I was talking about. We've got our ally, Mr. Fran Jones, 83 in the Kutuzov, getting hurt pretty bad. Myself and Sir Venomic rocking North Carolinas. This is the north map. We're uh, trying to control A, B, and C. Maybe a little bit overzealous. Even making a play over at D. This is unusual strategy, but we'll see how it works. And it looked like the game was supposed to go pretty well. We killed almost all of their destroyers outright. Uh, along with uh, along with one of their Atlantis. So, uh, we had a really good jump on the enemy, and every cat belonged to us. So, what you're seeing here in terms of North Carolina gameplay is... Uh, Two North Carolinas working together. There are no aircraft carriers. Focusing fire on just about everything we can find. Now, we see here that the cyclone's coming in in a minute 15. And I'm perma-detected by whatever the heck is out there. I don't remember at the time. But, uh... Lost all of our destroyers by the 14th minute of the match. Well, as the clock hit 14 anyway. Things just started going downhill from there. One after the other after the other, ships were getting deleted. We had cruisers go down, we had DDs go down. It was just a stone cold mess. So here I tried to go ahead and move into sea, use that strong North Carolina bow on armor, prevent any kind of counter push by the enemy so we could at least protect that one cap. See here, I, I know my audience. I see that the North Carolina just shot. I see that the Nizanao just shot. I decided to go ahead and try to get my third turret around, but then I made the decision, oh, wait, I should probably go ahead and angle my armor a little bit. I don't want to take any unnecessary damage. Really trying to use that solid frontal armor of the North Carolina to maximum advantage. Hitting one from this angle like we talked about in the review is extraordinarily difficult. As you see there, we just lost a cruiser, a Mayoko. Lost our Kutuzov as well. Cyclone has finally set in. Our teams are just diminishing wholesale. Focusing on the Niza now here. I'm signaling my buddy Sir Venomic to do the same. Um, trying to delete one thing at a time before the Cyclone actually sets in. A little bit of a mess. Again, you see we lost another cruiser. A second Mayoko went down. Now we're really getting strapped for for results. The game is starting to get away from us. Things are escalating pretty quickly. But right here what you see is an amazing overmatch. So the Nizen now is kind of like, like a mini Turpets, right? Or a mini Bismarck. Still got decent armor on it. Same kind of guns. But in terms of fighting the North Carolina bow on, it has no chance. And this armor right here, very easily wreckable by North Carolina shells if you can get the horizontal RNG to be able to hit. You see here we took a shot. How effective it is. I don't know if I screwed this one up or not. Five hits for 3k. What I mean, it's something. Could have probably shot that one better. Now as the cyclone sets in, see that the enemy is gonna start disappearing. Now we now it's a four versus seven. Now it's a three versus seven, so ships just died very quickly. Uh, at this point, Venom and I are pretty much on our own. We got another battleship over there just kind of running aground, not really sure what he's doing. But, uh, still trying to work this replay functionality thing. Anyway, he doesn't provide a lot of value. Getting his ass kicked. But we decided to go ahead and focus the Amagi. You know that the both of us, when properly angled with our, you know, with our guns and everything, we can easily overmatch this thing. He kept running broadside, trying to get greedy, shooting at an angled North Carolina. Did no damage. I, he probably hit every shell on that salvo, and he did nothing. See, now I took some risk and opened up. The angle he could probably penetrate. Didn't matter, though. He was on reload. He was turning out, running scared. Kept the focus fire on. Increased the pressure. At this point, we had one hell of an uphill fight. thing about the North Carolina, you know, there's so much, so much awesome stuff you can do. You can brawl, you can shoot reasonably well from a distance, you can 
post yourself up behind a hill and just nuke airplanes and become a 7.2 kilometer no-fly zone for the enemy. Well, really a 14 kilometer no-fly zone, right? But uh, it's just such a such a versatile piece of equipment. You just got to be able to keep it angled, keep it alive, make sure it doesn't take any unnecessary damage. Got to be understood that we really couldn't have done the things that we wanted to do if we had gotten killed early. We very well may have been able to protect, you know, preserve the game and preserve some of our team initially, but, uh... Point really no big deal. See, guaranteeing about 8... 8 K a salvo on the Imagi. Take a torp there. What it is. Heart of life. So the three of us were able to go ahead and neutralize the Imagi pretty efficiently. Most of us have decent health. So at this point, made the decision to move from C back to B. Try to get some caps down there. Play this evil game of ring around the rosy. No one wants to friggin' do it, but it's part of life. At this point, it all comes down to cap control. Focus fire. Finding out where the enemy is. You also want to take advantage of enemies that really don't know what the hell they're doing. Like, safe play right now is to just cap it out. Let everything just, you know, let everything just roll the way it will. Just deleted a plane right there. Uh, some enemy teams, even though they're up a lot, they'll YOLO in. They'll make life extremely easy for you. You can pick them off piecemeal. That's one by one, if you don't know what that means. And when you can do that, you've got a shot. Always love to see people just YOLO in one by one. Just a beautiful situation to be in. Turns an impossible situation into something far more manageable. So here the Turpets, even though he's low health, decides to take the lead into the cap. Terrible decision. I mean, look at what he's got left in the tank. Almost nothing. Should have waited for Venom to get in there and then kind of do his thing, you know. But now nah, he's he's impatient, or he has no map awareness. So now we're functioning as three different types of ships. Well, four really, I guess technically. We've got fighter planes up for scouts, so we're acting like a CV. We're getting close, moving around, capping things, so we're kind of like a DD. And we've got the opportunity to burn stuff to death if we need to. Looking like a cruiser. I usually like to sling AP though. So here I'm flanked by a destroyer. He decides to smoke up. It is what it is. We're able to get out of uh, threatening torp range and just continue focusing down the Bismarck. Now the Turpets just not having a good game here or something. I don't know what the deal is, but. He decides to run broad to the enemy with 3k health left. Turn back in to become broad to the other enemy on this side as well. So he's broad to two different forces right now. See how quick that plane went down? No chance. North Carolina's forget it. Now it's a two verse two verse six. Now we've really gotta pull out all the stops. Mark went down, Venom was able to get him. Now it's time to go after this North Carolina. Now look, he's not stupid either. His name's Professional New, but the guy semi knows what he's doing, right? He's he's bowing to us, he's backing out, he's not trying to give too many uh angles away. Now when a North Carolina is like this, take note of where I aimed. Right at the superstructure. That's where you're gonna get the majority of your damage. Anything here, anything here will most likely bounce. So right there is your sweet spot at this angle. Venom's working on a superstructure as well. Secondaries are lighting fires. Now this is where the North Carolina excels. The knife fight situation. Drive by shooting. You can't just sit here. You're trying to win the game. You have to kill things quickly. You gotta creep up on the flank of the enemy and do the best you can. Okay, we got a Shores trying to flank. Venom is able to delete him with no issues whatsoever. 
Now it's a two versus four. Caps apiece. Still working on the superstructure there. I aimed in incorrectly. Nailed the damn frontal turrets. Now we've got an additional risk, a full health North Carolina coming out. You obviously want to get rid of the low health target first without offering too much of yourself to the low health, uh, full health one. Here we're coming on in. Slightly better, 6,500 damage. Oh damn well, Venom's, Venom's 16 inch guns are aimed at this guy's superstructure to try to get better hits. Next one two punch should be the end of him. We're slowing down so we don't go too broad to the North Carolina. The left, and then we delete the North Carolina on the right. This next salvo. Full broad, nine shells, good night. Now this situation, this North Carolina decides to open up because he wants to get all of his guns on. Well, in this situation, you don't have to mess with all that. I opted to turn right directly into him. I wouldn't offer him too many crazy angles. He still might get a piece of me, but it's not going to be that much. That could have been a lot worse. Now it's time to go ahead and aim at the Citadel spots. Just kind of smack him around for God knows how much damage. And his own teammate kills him. You always love that. A little extra help. So far, you've been able to see the exceptional ability of the North Carolina to, you know, to survive in close quarters combat. Hit things very, very hard if it needs to. Bounce things off itself. With appropriate angles. Now here we see the cyclone about to end. Visibility is coming back. Made the right choice to go ahead and cap C. Get after it from there. But yeah, I chose this replay because it's the most recent replay that I have of us doing something fun in the North Carolina. Um, I might post something in the future about dealing with aircraft carriers and how you kind of work on that formation. But I usually like to run with a Shokaku and, uh, and a Destroyer. That's kind of like my favorite thing to run with. Sometimes I'll take a cruiser, but depends on their skill level. You can just go in and just troll the random community for as long as you want. Got air superiority. You've got the ability to shoot down planes if you need to. You've got stuff to spot for you and smoke you if you need it and kill other ships and get in knife fights with TDs in, in, in the destroyer that you bring with you. Uh, it's a good way to kind of farm damage you're planning on using the North Carolina. I think if you're going to use the North Carolina, you run with an aircraft carrier, use it to its max ability. To its strengths, you know. If there were never any CVs in the game, I would just run an Amagi, purely for the accuracy. Yeah, she's a beautiful ship. Uh, I hope you guys have fun with her. If you got any questions, you can come uh, hit me up on Twitter. i leave some comments here in the on the, on the YouTube page. Then I got my Twitch feed, obviously, twitch.tv slash General Dort. Come check us out. And we stream about five to seven days a week, depending on how little of a life I have. But this is my first video. I appreciate your feedback. Uh, I'd like to see what you guys can offer to make the channel better. And um, I'll work on doing some other stuff later on. You guys have a good one. And stay salty. Peace.